فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم The second thing that he done it is because the very So the author here brought the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu which is man adha amam man adha li waliyan anyone who harms my awliya my allies faqad adantu bil harb then this person is in war with Allah, صح? And the ulam or the awliya here is both, it's going to be mentioned soon inshaAllah ta'ala by Abu Hanif and Shafi'i that they are ulama. The ulama are people who know the Quran and the Sunnah. They're the ones who've memorized the Quran. They know the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then the author brought the hadith in Sahihain where the Prophet says, من صلى من صلى الصبح. Anyone who prays the congregation of Subha prayer, for في ذمة الله is in what? is in the protection of Allah. اللَّهُ بِشَيْءٍ مِنْ ذِمَّتِهِ That person is protected from evil, inshaAllah ta'ala, due to the fact that he is what? Because he's prayed in the congregation prayer of Fajr. Yeah? No. The, the two great Imams, Abu Hanifa and Imam Shafi'i, may Allah have mercy on them, are reported to have said, if the scholars are not friends of Allah, then Allah has no friend. So here the, 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 the ulama are the awliya of Allah. So Allah's allies are the ulama. So if you open your tongue at the ulama and you speak against the scholars and you say things about them, then you're in war with Allah. Who's going to win in a war between you and Allah? Who? Allah and you are going to have a mubaraza. Allah is going to destroy you subhanahu wa ta'ala. Naam. Also, Imam Abu Al-Qasim ibn As-Sakir, may Allah have mercy on him, said, Know, my brother, that the flesh of the scholars is poisonous. To backbite in Islam is often referred to as to eat from the flesh of someone, as it is referred to in the Quran. And so to describe the flesh of scholars as being poisonous suggests that he who backbites them will do harm to himself through incurring, incurring the wrath of Allah and Allah's custom of humiliating those who defame the scholars is well known and that whosoever utters a word of disrespect against the scholars will be punished by Allah before his death with the death of his heart Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says so let those who go against his orders Beware lest they be afflicted by a tribulation or be afflicted by a painful punishment. The author here brought the statement of Abu Qasim ibn Asakir rahimahullah in which he says in his kitab Tabiyyun al Kadib al Mustari, fi manusiba lil Imam Abi al Hassan al Ash'ari. And this basically says a very powerful statement, which is he says, I'lam know, ya akhi, my brother and my sister, wa faqan Allah wa yaka limardati. May Allah give us tawfiq and guide us to the straight path and give us the ability to follow that which pleases Allah. And may Allah make us from those who are conscious of him and that fear him, the way he deserves to be feared. That the flesh of the scholars is poisonous. If you eat poison, what's gonna to happen to you? A meat that's poisonous, what's gonna to happen to you? You'll die, you'll die. If you eat the flesh of a flesh that has poison on it, a meat that has poison on it, if you eat it, you'll die. So the flesh of the scholars is poisonous. And backbiting, we said, is what? Eating the flesh of a, your brother, right? So what you're doing is you're eating their flesh now. And their flesh is poisonous. So isn't it what Allah said in the Quran that eating the flesh of the Muslim is, uh, backbiting the Muslim is what? Is eating the flesh of your blood, brother, right? So you're eating this person's flesh. And as the Sheikh is saying, is that their flesh is poisonous. وَعَادَةُ and Allah's norms. The way Allah deals with these people who open their tongues to the ulama is fi hatki astari The way Allah destroys them and humiliates them is well known. Anyone who opens his tongue unrestrictedly and then starts to speak about the honor of the scholars and their dignity and their reputation, he makes takfir of them. He makes takfir of them and says that they're kuffar, the scholars of dollars or whatever he calls them. He calls them. That person should know who's opening his tongue with on the scholars to criticize them, to, to, to slander them. Then what you need to know is that Allah is going to kill your heart before death comes to you. 
your heart is going to die, it's going to rotten. Wallahi, it's going to rotten. And a lot of these people who've opened their tongues to the ulama and spoke about the scholars have ended up apostating from Islam. What do they do? They apostated from, the, from Islam, they left Islam because it became very light for them to speak about the, the poison of the, uh, the flesh of the scholars. So the author then brings Qawlu Ta'ala فَلِحَذَرِ يُخَالِفُونَ عَلَى أَمْرِهِ Be cautious of those who are opposing Allah's command. Okay, po opposing Allah's command here means going against him by slandering the scholars. What's going to happen to them? أَن تُصِيبَهُمْ fitna, A trial and a tribulation will afflict them. Or يُصِيبَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ Or a severe punishment will afflict them the day of judgment. Abdullah uh, Ahmad ibn Hanbal, he said, Ahmad ibn Hanbal said, أَن تُصِيبَهُمْ fitna Here means a ridda, apostasy. The apostasy is going to happen. It's going to happen to them. Naam. Then the author says, الْبَابُ الرَّابِعُ فِي آدَابِ مُعَلِّمِ الْقُرْآنِ وَمُتَعَلِّمِهِ هذا الباب مع البابين بعده هي مقصود الكتاب وهو طويل منتشر وأنا أشير إلى مقاصده مختصرة في فصول ليسهل حفظه وضبطه إن شاء الله تعالى فصل في إخلاص المقرئ والقارئ أول ما ينبغي للمقرئ والقارئ أن يقصد بذلك وجه الله تعالى قال الله تعالى وَمَا أُمِرُوا إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُوا اللَّهَ مُخْلِصِينَ لَهُ الدِّينَ حُنَفَاءَ وَيُقِيمُوا الصَّلَاةَ وَيُؤْتُوا الزَّكَاةَ وَذَلِكَ دِينُ الْقَيِّمَةِ أي الملة المستقيمة وفي الصحيحين عن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم إنما الأعمال بالنيات وإنما لكل امرئ ما نواه وهذا الحديث من أصول الإسلام وروينا عن ابن عباس رضي الله تعالى عنهما قال إنما يحفظ الرجل على قدر نيته وعن غيره إنما يعطى الناس على قدر نياتهم وروينا عن الأستاذ أبي القاسم القشيري رحمه الله تعالى قال الإخلاص إفراد الحق في الطاعة بالقصد وهو أن يريد بطاعته التقرب إلى الله وهو أن يريد بطاعته التقرب إلى الله تعالى دون شيء آخر من تصنع لمخلوق أو اكتساب محمد أو اكتساب محمدة عند الناس أو محبة مدح من الخلق أو معنى من المعانيس والتقرب إلى الله تعالى قال ويصح أن يقال الإخلاص تصفية الفعل عن ملاحظة المخلوقين وعن حذيفة المرعشي رحمه الله تعالى قال الإخلاص استواء أفعال العبد في الظاهر والباطن وعن ذي النون وعن ذي النون رحمه الله تعالى قال ثلاث من علامات الإخلاص استواء البدح والذم من العامة ونسيان رؤية الأعمال في الأعمال واقتضاء ثواب الأعمال في الآخرة وعن الفضيل بن عياض رحمه الله تعالى قال ترك العمل لأجل الناس رياء والعمل لأجل الناس شرك والإخلاص أن يعافيك الله تعالى منهما وعن السهل التستري رحمه الله تعالى قال نظر الأكياس في تفسير الإخلاص فلم يجدوا غير هذا أن تكون حركته وسكونه في سره وعلانيته لله تعالى وحده لا يمازجه شيء لا نفس ولا هوى ولا دنيا وعن السري رحمه الله تعالى قال لا تعمل للناس شيئا ولا تترك لهم شيئا ولا تعطي لهم شيئا ولا تكشف لهم شيئا وعن القشي قال أقل الصدق وعن القشيري قال أقل الصدق استواء السر والعنانية وعن الحارث المحاسبي رحمه الله تعالى قال الصادق هو الذي لا يبالي لو خرج كل قدر له في قلوب الخلق من أجل من أجل صلاح قلبه ولا يحب اطلاع الناس على مثاقيل الذر من حسن عمله ولا يكره اطلاع الناس على سيئا 
ولا يكره اطلاع الناس على سيء من عمله فإن كراهته لذلك دليل على أنه يحب الزيادة عندهم وليس هذا من أخلاق الصديقين وعن غيره إذا طلبت الله تعالى بالصدق أعطاك مرآة تبصر فيها كل شيء أعطاك مرآة تبصر فيها كل شيء من عجائب الدنيا والآخرة وأقاويل السلف في هذا كثير وأقاويل السلف في هذا كثيرة نشرنا إلى هذه الأحرف منها تنبيها على المطلوب وقد ذكرت جملا من ذلك مع شرحها في أول شرح المهذب وضممت إليها من آداب المعلم والمتعلم والفقيه والمتفقه ما لا يستغني ما لا يستغني عنه طالب علم والله أعلم نعم chapter four prescribed manners of those who teach the Quran and those who study it this chapter along with the two chapters following it is the main purpose of the book and is thus long and detailed. I will point out its objectives and summarize them in sections so that they may be more easily memorized and understood. So the author here tells us that the fourth chapter and the fifth chapter are the two longest chapters in the book. They are the two longest chapters. So if inshallah we succeed today to finish the fourth chapter then we're good, inshallah ta'ala. If we don't, we're in trouble. The first thing incumbent upon the teacher and student of the Quran is that they seek with their deeds the pleasure of the <coughs> Lord. Allah says, and they were commanded not, but they should worship Allah, they should worship Allah and worship none but Him alone abstaining from ascribing partners to him and perform prayers and give zakah and that is the right religion meaning that it is the upright religion so the first thing for the muqri the one who's reading the quran you see or the red the one who's reading on the one it's read on both of them the, stu the student and the teacher both of them is the first thing that they need to come with is a yaqsida bi dhalika wa allah ta'ala that they seek allah's face they do this for allah as Allah said in the ayah, I have not commanded them except to worship me alone with, with sincerity. So we were commanded every righteous deeds that we do, we do it with what? With sincerity and we do it only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sake. Naam. In the two authentic books, it is narrated that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said the, When the scholars they say the two most authentic books, they mean the what? Bukhari and Muslim. And this hadith is narrated from Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu ta'ala anhu. Deeds are both with intentions and every man shall be compensated according to his intention. So the actions that a person comes with is all based on what they intended. And your reward is in accordance to your intention. Okay? So every action that a person does, even if it's good, but they had no intention for it, they don't get rewarded for it. Okay, to get rewarded for that action, you need to perfect your intention. So it's coming and reading the Quran or coming to a lesson like this and sitting and not taking knowledge. If you don't have an intention for it, then you won't get rewarded. This hadith forms the basis for one of the fundamental principles of Islam. So this hadith is one of the foundations of Islam, one of the great principles of Islam. Now. Also, Ibn Abbas عنه, is reported to have said, A man only learns, also meaning understands or memorizes, as much as his intention allows. So meaning, if a person wants to memorize the Quran, if a person wants to seek knowledge and gain knowledge, Abdullah ibn Abbas said, Inna ma rajul ala niyatihi. A person will memorize in accordance to their intention. Okay, and a memory of a person is connected to their intention and how dedicated and motivated you are. If you're motivated and you're driven, your memorization will be high. You would be able to memorize the Quran and you're doing it with sincerity because when a person is sincere, there is nothing they are going to stop at. And if a person was doing it for somebody, then it will stop. If that person turns away from you, you, won't, you stop doing it, right? If a person was doing something for the people, 
and the people don't praise you anymore, you stop doing it, right? But if you weren't doing it for the people, you were doing it for Allah, whether the people praise you for it, whether the people acknowledge your efforts, you don't really care. Because what is it you were doing it for? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the one who's memorizing the Quran, if he does it solely for Allah's sake, his memory will be higher. And this is a, this is a statement of Ibn Abbas you need to remember, memorize. إِنَّمَا يَحْفَظُ الرَّجُلُ عَلَىٰ قَدْرِ نِيَتِهِ A person will memorize in accordance to their intention. In another word, he said, إِنَّمَا يُعْطَى النَّاسُ عَلَىٰ قَدْرِ نِيَاتِهِ That the people are given knowledge in accordance to their intentions. When Allah sees from your heart and He sees that you are sincere, you're doing it for His sake, that's when Allah is going to give you knowledge. And what's the greatest knowledge to be given? The Quran. The Quran. Okay? So if Allah sees from you sincerity that you're mukhlis, Allah will open doors for you. Allah will give you secrets that no one else will know. Yeah? You will know underground tunnels in knowledge, dungeons that no one's moved, quick roads, shortcuts. All of that will be open for you. All because of what? Because your intention is good. So you deserve that. If your intention is not good, you're reading one thing which is right in front of you, you can't even memorize it all day, you're struggling to memorize it. Now, Others are also reported to have said, men will only be rewarded in accordance with the sincerity of their intentions. All of these statements and much more you can find it in the kitab, Jami'u li akhlaqi rawi wa adabi sami' by Khatib al-Baghdadi. Khatib al-Baghdadi in his kitab, Jami'u لأخلاق الراوي وأداب السامع and if Allah gives us time we should go through that book Sheikh Bakr Abu Zayd summarized it so if we can go through the summary of Sheikh Bakr Abu Zayd that would be good and then we can probably do the actual book itself it talks about the etiquette of the one who is carrying the narrations and he's passing on the narration so this, is, this book what does it talk about? the one who's carrying the Quran right? Khatib al-Baghdadi will be talking about the one who's carrying the Hadith isn't that what we need? Here we're talking about the etiquette and the one who's carrying the Quran. And I think we should do Khatib al-Baghdadi's kitab on the one who is narrating and the one who is being narrated to. Here this book we're talking about the one who's carrying the Quran and the one who the Quran is being passed on to, the student of the Quran, right? So I think that should be the second book if we were to do something to do, inshaAllah ta'ala. Professor Abu Qasim al-Qushayri. The word Ustad is used here. Ustad means professor, teacher. A teacher, a person who teaches the people. Ayyah. May Allah have mercy upon him. Abul Qasim al-Qushayri, he wrote a kitab al-Risala. And come on, he is from the Sufiya. Abul Qasim al-Qushayri is from the Sufis. And his Risala that he authored is the book that Abu Hamid al-Ghazali, rahimahullah, in his kitab, Hiya Ulum al-Din, he worked on. That book, Hiya Ulum al-Din, by Abu Hamid al-Ghazali, is basically works on Abil Qasim al-Qushayri's kitab, his Risala. It's called Risala al-Qushayriya. Darul Minhaj published it. Darul Minhaj, they published it. Darul Minhaj, the owners of Darul Minhaj are Shafi'i, Sufiya, Naqshabandiya in the, the publishing house. But they bring out nice Shafi'i books. Nice Shafi'i books. Publish them very well. And they're the ones who published just about every madhab shafi'i book. Nihayatul Matlab fi dirayat al madhab by Ma'ali al Joyni, Ayyad Tabai. They published it, they done the best publication for that. This book that we're reading right now, that's in front of us, which is Tibyan fi Adabi Hamalatul Quran, Dalim al they published it. It's the best publication out there for Tibyan. They work very hard. They work very hard on, on the books. And they bring it out, muhaqqaq, very well organized, very well written. If you stand over the original Nusakh Khatiya, and you compare, you rarely find mistakes. Just so far while I was reading, I came across one mistake that they did. It's meant to be Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As, they wrote al-Asi. They put a ya' there. And this could probably be a mistake which is khata matba'i. Public, the publishing mistake, it's rare you come across it. Kifayatul Aqiyar, which is the Shafah Matli Abi Shuja. They done it, Darim al-Hajj. Ihya Ulumuddin by Abi Hamid al-Ghazali, they also published it. على كل حال رسالة القشيرية is the رسالة that الإمام أبو حامد الغزالي is speaking about and talking about and he's working on 
in his kitab Ihya Ulum Deen. So here, back in the days of Sufiya were not the same, by the way. They were not all the same, as Shaykh al-Islam Taymi mentions. From the Sufis, from the Sufis, were Fadail Mu'yad. Fadail Mu'yad was from the Sufiya, Ayyam to Sufiya. Ibrahim ibn Adham was from the Aymat al-Sufiya. Sulaiman al-Darani was from the Aymat al-Sufiya. But they were different. Junaid was from the Aymat al-Sufiya. The Sufiya, they went through phases. Phases, sorry. They went through phases. They changed as time went by. The ones before, they were aesthetic, Zuhad. They left this world and they were towards the Akhirah. They were Zuhad. Are you there? And they were more about they were more about living a simple life in this world. Okay, just to be aesthetic, not to be a person of this dunya. They were ones who used to carry Azimun and Nusus al Wahyain. They used to honor the textual evidence. Abu Junaid, one of the statements that was, Suleiman Darani is a student of Abu Junaid. Junaid, one of the statements that was transmitted from him was that he said, I sometimes hear a person say a benefit and I don't write it. I tawaqqaf, I withhold. And I say to that person, what witness do you have that, that, that goes in accordance to this benefit that you mentioned? Do you have an ayah or the hadith for it? Are you with me? But as time went by, the Sufis changed, especially when the time of Abu Hamid al-Ghazali came. When Abu Hamid al-Ghazali came, what he did was, he emerged the Sufiya with Ash'ariya. Sah? Ash'ariya and Sufiya emerged towards one another. Back in the days, Ash'ariya and the Sufiya were two different things, they were two entities. After Abi Hamid al-Ghazali onwards, you'd rarely find an Ash'ari except he's a Sufi. He's one of the Turuq al-Sufiya, one of the Brailwiya or Naqshabandiya or whatever, Qadiriya, whatever it may be, he is a Tariq min Turuq al-Sufiya. But his Aqeedah is Aqeedah al-Ash'ari, or he's a Maturidi, مثلا. Are you with me? So, then they adopted things which were Shirkiyat, At-Tawassulu bil awliya you know? doing tawassul, intercession through the righteous people. They started to adopt these things. These were not common amongst the early generation of the Sufiya. They didn't have that stuff. They never fell into those major shirk statements that you find the later Sufiya falling into. And then after, as time went on, they started to pass on beliefs that this world that we're in today, their awliya played a role in its building. That they helped Allah with the spreading of the sama and the spreading of this earth and etc. Statements which were very, very dangerous. Like Bosiri, what he said in his statement, in the, in the midudik al dunya wa darrata wa min ulumi ka ulmu lawhi wa qalami. That Muhammad, this world that we, we're in today is from your generosity. You're the one who gave it to us. It's part of your generosity. And also, from your knowledge is what's written on the lawhul mahfud. What's written on the lawhul mahfud is from the knowledge which you know. Are you with me? And where the Sufiya took this from was the Shia. They connected themselves too much with the Tashayyu. Shia came and they slipped this into them. Are you there, brothers? And so, istighatha and tawassul, it entered onto them. Are you with me, brothers? So, the name Sufiya, they say that they, their Sufiya comes from Ahlul Sufa, the people that used to live in the Prophet's Masjid, Abu Huraira and, and, and the likes of him, who used to live in the Masjid. But the strongest opinion, Ibn Taymiyyah says that, no. Sufiya came from, the, they used to wear Suf. That's the kind of clothes that they used to wear, Suf, which is cotton. Back in those days, cotton was looked down at. It wasn't one of the best clothes. So they used to wear unappealing clothing. They weren't attractive. They were Zahideen. Then they started to introduce dancing and music. And now which they call, now which so many people don't, don't understand, but call a Nasheed. Nasheeds came from the Sufiya. They're the ones who brought it. That this is a spiritual uplifted for them. That when they sing and they dance, is something not you won't understand or it's a spiritual uplifting so they sing they dance okay they started to adopt these concepts as well it started to creep into them so they will dance and now if you see them they go in circles they swirl and whatnot yeah this is ibadah for them and adhkar and dhikrs that are really strange like instead of saying allah they say Allahu, 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 Hu, 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 just Hu. They take the Bamir of hat. Hu, 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 they just go fast, just saying all day, and that's a dhikr for them. Sah? All of those were things that they started to adopt and things that they started to, to do. So, 
Shaykh al-Islam, Ibn Taymiyyah took after them. Write it so that and at his time there was a Ta'if group called the Rafi'i, the Rafi'i group who used to claim that they could walk through fire, it wouldn't burn them. You see, they used to claim this stuff and show the people that this is the kind of people they are, the awliya of Allah. So Ibn Taymiyyah took it to every level with them. Shara'an, he debated with them. Aqlan, in rationality, he destroyed them. When nothing would work and they still were stubborn on their beliefs, he said, how about this? We all go into the fire together. And let's get ready. You guys go into the fire. I, Shaykh Al-Islam, I, Ibn Taymiyyah, will also go in the fire with you guys, but with condition. He knew that they used to wear, they used to put on some th things on, which when they went into the fire, it wouldn't really burn them. Huh? Inflammatory stuff, huh? which they would put on so that it won't burn them. So he said, I'll give you vinegar. Lutaymi says, you have to shower with vinegar, khal, that will get rid of everything. We all go into the fire and we'll see who it burns. They, they, they lost them, they didn't know what to say. So Shaykh Al-Islam Taymi exposed them in every different levels and every different angles. When they refused to go into the fire, he said, okay, how about this? Just put, your, put the khal on your finger and put it into the fire. Just a finger. They refused to. Alayhi rahmatullah. Just a finger. Burn your finger and I'll do it with you. I'm with you. I'll do it with you. No. They got exposed for what they were upon. So he started to adopt this belief which is that وَعْبُدْ رَبَّكَ حَتَّى يَأْتِيَ كَالْيَقِينَ That there's a level which you reach. It's called certainty. It's called the certainty level. Which once you reach that level, you don't worship Allah anymore. Salah is not wajib on you. Zakat is not wajib on you. All the takalif shara'iyya, the jurisprudent rulings, the things that were wajibat, the muharramat are not haram from you. So you see some of the Sufi leaders, you see that they marry their own daughters, they marry their own parents. Common, no haram. There's no muharramat. Hurrimat alaykum ummahatukum. None of that is haram for them anymore. Because they have reached a level called yaqeen. So scholars done takfir on them. They would drink khamar. They would do things that were muharramat. And when they are asked why, they won't pray salah. They won't pay zakat. They won't even go to the Kaaba. And some of them even claim whilst they're sitting at that particular place, they'll say to you, I went to the Kaaba and I came back. I just visited the Kaaba and I've just come back. And I saw Fulan ibn Fulan in the Kaaba and he was doing tawaf around the Kaaba. Salah. If you go back to your, no, don't go far. Go to Somalia, you see people like that who believe those stuff. I saw a guy one time, a large amount of women were with him. This guy's got an entourage of women. Like he's got all of them, 30 women all running after him. Somalia. All of them are running after him. And they all call him Abu. Dad. Dad, dad, dad. He's got stu boys, men as well. They're entourage again. Another 30, 40 entourage. Follow him. The women he marries. The way he deals with everything. The way he does things. No one's ever seen him pray Salah. He does not pray the Salah. They all call him dad. They respect him. If anyone, if you ever say anything about him, Billah, you'll be killed. You'll be murdered on the spot. You just have to watch everything that's happened. Because in that village, he's got everything on. He's got everything on control. This is just one. Thousands of them are like that around the country. Go travel to uh, Pakistan and India and countries like that. You guys is on YouTube. Don't worry, your stuff is on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Uh, the guy gets covered with some things and goes mm -hmm. So YouTube, they put a big cloth over him and he's doing this You guys always take it a step further He goes, he, he, so he, he starts shaking the, uh, he starts shaking the, uh, the uh, cloth at this point So they're saying he's going to the Kaaba He's going to the Kaaba, he's doing Dawah around the Kaaba And he's just sitting there and just, It reminds me of what's it called, Dragon Ball Z, yeah? <laughs> Teleportation, what's it called? When they just zoop, they go somewhere else, zoop, they go somewhere else, what's it called? It's the transmission. Transmission wasn't the word, I'm sure. Translocation. Translocation, huh? Anyways, that's what it is. The man goes to the Kaaba, does the wah, does Umrah, comes back, says Fulan was there. Fulan, I wouldn't even be shocked if it's true that he does that, do that. Because Shayateen work with these people. They work with shayateen and things i wouldn't be shocked if it's if it's actually something you know that he's he's really finding out through working with the shayateen who's gone there who's not the point is this is the things that they adopted so the ulama kafaroo they made takfir on them they made what they made takfir on them 
So books have been written, rasail have been written, they became very common around the Muslim world in Africa, places in Africa like East Sudan, they became very common, Somalia, they became very, even in Nigeria, Ghana, subcontinent Asia, America, well, Western countries, they're very weak, very, very weak, their influence is very weak, but countries that are poor, they got strength, they do things for the people, they feed the people, they, they take leadership positions where through that they can influence the people. Now. Professor Abu Qasim al Hushayri, may Allah have mercy upon him, once said, Sincerity is to single out Allah in terms of directing all acts of obedience to Him. So, ifradul haqqi fi ta'ati bil qasdi. When you're obeying, when you're intending, you all do it for whose sake? Allah. That is, one should seek to become closer to Allah through obedience to Him and not seek compensation from any of His creation or their praise or love or any other objective. He also said, when you do something, you don't wait for people to praise you. Some people, they want to get recognition for every single thing which they do. They want praise. That's what they want. If they get praised, they feel like what they did was good. They get criticized, what they think they did was wrong. Was wrong, right? That's not the case. It's not the case. You don't care about what people have to say and what people think and how they perceive things. What is important for you as a Muslim is what? Have you done it for Allah's sake? The reason is because رِضَ النَّاسِ غَايَةُ لَا تدرك. Pleasing the people is a goal you're never going to reach. If you please one person, you anger another. If you anger another, you please another. So your goal should not be pleasing the people. A lot of people, it has tired them. They've become tired of trying to please the people, but they got nowhere. Your goal should not be to, be to please the people and to even let that be in your mind. The people, rather they like sometimes what's bad for them. They like what's bad for them, what's not even good for them. So how can I try to please you? If I please you, it would mean that I would have to entertain for you what I know that's bad for you, right? Who likes to wake up right now and pray Fajr in the Masjid's first line? Qaleel, little do. Are you there? Who likes to pray Qiyamul Layl? Who likes to fast every Mondays and Thursdays? These are acts of obedience that many people don't like to do. So you as an individual, don't dismiss what's good for the people because you know they don't like it. It is correct to say that sincerity is to purify one's actions from seeking the observation of others. Yeah, ikhlas means tasfiyatul fi'li. You purify from your actions. You cleanse from your actions. And mulahabatil makhluqeen, the observation of the creation. The poet would say, "Ikhlasuna lillahi saf al qalb min iradatin siwahu fahdar ya fatib." That you intend everything for Allah's sake, and you cleanse from it. You get rid of. You get rid of it being for Allah, anyone other than Allah's sake. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Walidalik ikhlas is one of the hardest things a person works with. Wallah, it's a very hard act. Because within one lecture, within one talk of yours, your intentions is changing consistently. Salaf al Ummah, what did they say? We kunna nujadid, we will renew our intentions in one sit so many times. So many times. So it's not like when you start, you're praying. You started for the sake of Allah. You're praying for the sake of Allah. And from the corner of your eye, you see somebody who you respect. Bam, your intention changes. Sahih? Are you with me? You weren't doing it for anybody other than Allah when you stood up. But now look what happened to you. So you see, you, your arms start opening up. You start holding your hand properly. You start praying properly. All of this is now that your intention is swaying away from you. You need to fight and get it back. Sah? So that's why. Khalifa al Marashi. Al Marashi. Al Marashi. May Allah have mercy on him once said Sincerity is the balance between the outward actions and words and inward aspects, sincerity of one's deeds. You know what is sincerity? Sincerity is when your personal life, your internal affairs, behind closed doors and outside in public, you're the same. That's sincerity. That's what he said. 
Hudayfat al-Mar'ashi said al-Ikhlas means istiwa' af'al al-abdi that the person's actions are the same fi al-dhahiri wal-batini privately and publicly 